Hey everybody, welcome back to Jeff Bull Central. We're checking out Planet Zoo uh, on Console Edition. Uh, I'm playing this on the Xbox Series X, but it's also available on PS5, and of course it's, it's available on PC, because it's a PC game. That's where it comes from. Uh, immediately, I want you to know that this game is hard to play on console with a gamepad, with an Xbox controller or a DualSense PS5 controller. Immediately, you need to know that. Uh, and, I, and I want you to know that because uh, a lot of people who play uh, console games and then get a PC game for the console suddenly are dismayed when, you know, it's, it's say it's a zoo game and you're trying to put in a barrier for a zoo exhibit for a monkey. Uh, and your monkey uh, keeps escaping because it's hard to actually put in the barrier with a gamepad. So that's a thing. What's great about Planet Zoo here is that on the Xbox, at least... Uh, I haven't checked into it on PlayStation, but on the Xbox, at least, you can use a mouse and keyboard, okay? So you can play it how it's supposed to be played. Here's an example. Like, this is, you know, building an, building an enclosure for an elephant. Um, can be a little tricky on the gamepad, but we'll just, we'll dispense with that, because you can use a mouse and keyboard, so don't even worry about that. Uh, this is a PC game, Planet Zoo, made by uh, a lot of the original people who made, like, the Zoo Tycoon game. Sorry, the Zoo Tycoon games. They also made Roller Coaster Tycoon back in the day. In the modern era, they made Planet Coaster, uh, which I also reviewed on Xbox for Jeff Bowl Central when it launched a few years ago. That's a really, really fun game, Planet Coaster. I really enjoyed playing that, even though, again, on the Xbox controller, it's kind of hard. I'm stubborn. I don't use a mouse and keyboard, but, I, you know, that's just me. Um... So when, when Planet Zoo, I, when it originally launched on PC, I watched a lot of stuff from it. I'm not a PC gamer, typically. I'm a, I'm a console guy. And I just, it looks, it looks so great because the animals, the, the animal behavior is really nice. You can get really close with the animals. You can get really close with the guests. You can zoom all the way out to God mode. You can get way in there and get into first person mode with some of the people and with, a, with, with an otter, for instance, a gentle, loving little otter. This is my wife's otter, by the way. My wife, uh, my wife uh, made a little zoo for herself, too. So, um, you know, and, and so I, I had to play it. I had to get it when it came to console. I like Sims. I like strategy games. I like stuff that isn't always shooting and looting. <laughs> Not all the time. I like that stuff, too, but, you know. Um, so, what I want you to know most about this game in regards to a review meant for Xbox Series X is that if you are not super experienced with Sims, there's a, there's a learning curve. And it's kind of a big learning curve only because um, there's just so much management. There's so much little bits of information. There's so many menus and tweaks. They have a tutorial section, which is actually very helpful. It's actually three different levels of tutorial that they give you. Um, and that's great because it, it, otherwise I would have been a little bit lost even though I played Planet Coaster and I've played the Tycoon, ty he said it again, Tycoon games. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's something you need to be aware of. If you're, if you, if you're not super experienced with Sims, you know, just just little things like even per getting an animal into an exhibit there's a lot of steps in the process and really what it's meant to do is simulate what it would be like to run a zoo so they include as much as many options as possible to to really give you that experience because that's what you're here for okay you're not just here to look at the pretty animals which they are pretty they're gorgeous animals in this game um, you're there to manage a zoo, like from financial perspective, from a popularity perspective, from a, a guest happiness perspective, from an animal happiness perspective. That's what you're doing. So there's so there's a lot to know and there's a lot to delve into, and all of that, for, from my perspective, is really great. But if you're not, as I said, super versed, okay. Um, so like, let me just give you an example. When you, when you want a new animal, first of all, you got to build an enclosure. Uh, that involves a lot of steps. You've got to uh, look at the animal, what they need as far as terrain, as far as food and water, as far as uh, toys even, uh, as far as food enrichment goes, which is different from actual uh, the food that they eat. 
Uh, you have to pick tropical. You have to pick uh, North American. You have to build the terrain, and you can sculpt the ground beautifully in this game. You can easily make little ponds. You can easily build up the earth. You can sculpt an enclosure however you want. Uh, sky's the limit. Your imagination is the limit. Then you have to go into the animal market. You have to purchase the right animals. Usually a male and a female will work for most species, but not ubiquitously. You have to move them to your trade center. If you want, you can move them to your quarantine after that. And then finally you can place them in the zoo. Um, and then once they're in the zoo, you have to put up uh, information about them, education elements, so that your guests know what they're even looking at. So that's just one small example. Imagine building a tram that, that sees the whole zoo. It's a lot like building a roller coaster um, in the coaster game. But there's just as many elements there. There's just as much to fiddle with. <laughs> Call it fiddly bits. Call it fiddly parts. Because that's really what you're doing. You know, staff management. Eventually, your zoo's going to get so big that you'll need security guards. You're going to need you're going to need janitors. You're going to need zookeepers. You're going to need educators. You're going to need researchers. And you're going to have to research all sorts of diseases and stuff if your animals come down with them. And you're going to need vets to treat them. And you'll need vet centers. You're going to need... And this is the list is going on here for a reason because I'm trying to show you what's in this game because it's pretty full. You're going to need uh, food and drink vendors. And you're going to have to hire them. Um, so, yeah. It's like a really full really complex, really beautiful game. And, <coughs> excuse me, and as far as how it runs on um, Xbox, I really didn't have any problems. I really didn't. Now, I'm not the kind of guy, when I, when I build something in a zoo game or the coaster game, for instance, where I have to fill in every square inch, the more objects um, that you place in the, an environment relative to the space available, relative to the processor on your either your PC or your console or whatever, the more the game has the potential to slow down or glitch or even freeze or crash. Now, the game has crashed a couple times for me, and that was super frustrating, I have to admit. Uh, crash back to home screen. But it does autosave somewhat frequently and if you save often enough it's not that big of a problem um but as far as slowdown goes i really didn't see it there was one time i saw it and my zoo was getting pretty big uh and i was putting in that elephant enclosure i was talking about earlier um but otherwise it runs pretty beautifully on xbox it's pretty good and i can only and i can only expect the same for uh playstation um, but anyways, that's, that's the game. That's, uh, that's my, my new, uh, that's my new Zoo Tycoon game, Planet Zoo on Xbox Series X. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. I really like Sims. I really like this Sim in particular. That's it. Uh, I hope you liked this video. I hope you found it informative. Um, please like and share and comment and, uh, subscribe to the channel. Please, please do. I love you. Oh! Yeah. Okay. Do me a favor, everybody. This is my uh, newest uh, musical release, Audiophile 1. It is uh, remastered, resequenced, remade uh, version of my first album uh, that I put out, oh, I guess about four years ago now. Um, I always wanted it to sound a little bit better. I always wanted it to flow a little bit better. So that's what I've done here. You can check this out. Spotify, uh, Amazon Music, Apple Music, even here on YouTube. That's it. That's all I got to say. I am spent. Or spint. Is that the French? No, that sounds more German. A spinta. That's the Italian. Sorry if I just offended people. <laughs>